What's going on everyone? My name is Devin Lorenz. Today we're going to cover three camera basics that everyone needs to know to be a great photographer or cinematographer. Today we're going to talk about ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. First, let's talk about aperture. Aperture is the opening of the lens that allows light to enter. Oftentimes, it's marked by an F number, such as F1.4 or F16. Here we have a Minolta 55mm 1.7 lens. As we open up all the way, we can see the aperture will let in a lot of light. As we stop down, aperture F2, 2.8, etc. is going to give us a smaller opening, therefore less light will enter the camera. Now why is the aperture important? The larger aperture, the more light our camera can absorb, the faster we can shoot in a low light environment, or we can get a faster shutter speed to freeze our action. Photography is all about light, so it's extremely important to understand aperture. The more light we can have into our camera, we refer to that lens as a faster lens. An f1.4 lens is often more expensive as well. Let's take a look at some of the same subjects shot at f1.4 and then again at f8 at f16. Next up we're going to talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the speed in which your shutter will open and close allowing light to enter your camera to either expose the film or the digital sensor. Together the aperture and the shutter speed will change the way your image looks. The shutter speed is really important to help freeze action. Shutter speeds are often marked in fractions of a second or whole seconds. For example, a shutter speed of 1 over 250 notates 1 250th of a second. A faster shutter speed will freeze action from either you as the photographer or if your subject is moving. As a photographer, it's extremely important to understand how shutter speed affects your image. Typically, if you're shooting a wedding, you don't want to use a slow shutter speed because you do want your bride and groom to be in focus. However, if you're photographing streets or cityscapes, you may want a slow shutter speed to show motion in your surrounding environment. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here's an example of a slow shutter speed used in Shanghai, showing the cars blurred out. However, the buildings are still frozen because this was shot on a tripod. Let's take a look at an example of a fast shutter speed. This was shot at about 1 500th of a second at f2.8. Here you'll see the basketball players are completely frozen, stopping the motion as they're dunking or shooting a basketball. All right, now that we've talked about aperture and shutter speed, let's begin talking about the meter. The meter is built into your camera or you can have a separate meter. This is your light meter that'll gauge the light based on the aperture and the shutter speed you have set. You're going to see negative numbers to the left and positive numbers to the right. The negative numbers means the image is underexposed, which means the image will come out dark. If the meter is just in the middle, that means the image is properly exposed. And if the meter is to the right, that'll mean the image is overexposed. It's a much brighter image. As you go through, you're going to adjust your aperture and your shutter speed to change and you'll see the meter move in your camera. Next up, let's talk about ISO. This is the last part of the equation after aperture and shutter speed. ISO will also affect your exposure. ISO deals with the sensitivity of your film or your digital camera sensor to light. Now what does that mean? What is sensitivity to light? If you're in a really bright sunny day, you're going to want a lower ISO number such as ISO 100 or ISO 200. At the same time, these are going to produce very clean and crisp images. If you're in a really dark area or shooting at nighttime, you might have to bump your ISO up to ISO 1000, ISO 1600, and these days some cameras go up as high as 25,000 or 128,000. With the higher ISO, these images oftentimes are going to show digital noise, different parts that are showing up in the image. It's not going to be as clear and crisp compared to ISO 100. Alright, so in review we've talked about aperture. Aperture is the size of the opening on the lens that allows light to enter the camera. Shutter speed is the speed that the shutter will open inside of your camera to also allow light in and exposing the sensor or your film. We talked about meter. The meter is going to show you if your image is underexposed or overexposed. And lastly we talked about ISO. ISO is how sensitive your sensor or your film will be to light. If you're in a brighter area, you're going to use a lower ISO, such as ISO 100. 
If you're shooting at night or in a dimly lit area, you're gonna have to start moving your ISO up and then unfortunately losing quality within your image. Nowadays, some cameras will shoot very clean, crisp images at ISO 1600. So if you have a newer Sony camera, for example, those are gonna be producing beautiful images even at a high ISO. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my first video on camera basics. Please subscribe down below, like, and share with friends and family. Stay tuned, more videos will be coming around camera basics, cinematography, and travel. Thanks.